Hello, welcome back to the Affordable Watch. Thanks for watching. In today's video, we will have a look at Eterna, specifically the black dial version of the Eternity model, which seems to be priced at around £1300 in the UK, but with a bit of searching, you should be able to find it much cheaper. There are several variations, some on leather straps and some with metal bracelets. I believe that we all need a dress watch in our collection, even if for some of us, myself included, those formal occasions are rare. I always felt that dress watches, if well made, can be quite special. I say this because when it comes to dress watches, it is quite difficult to hide the poor build quality and superficial finishing. The watchmaker doesn't have a lot to work with. There's the case, the dial, hands, markers and perhaps a date window. It's just all out in the open, easy to see and scrutinize. In the case of our Eterna here, we are looking at a black sunburst dial, which has a very nice texture to it, although this may not be visible in my super high quality professional images. The markers are applied, and just like the hands and the case, were highly polished to a glossy finish. I would have loved to see a black date window matching the dial. There is a sapphire crystal protecting the dial and we also have a transparent case back, as is the case with most contemporary dress watches. Also on par with those is the water resistance of 50 meters. A nice touch worth mentioning would be the Eterna logo engraved on both strap buckle and crown. The Eterna Eternity is powered by the automatic Celita SW200, which is the main competitor of the ETA 2824. This particular caliber beats at 28,800 VPH, provides 38 hours of power reserve, has anti-magnetic properties thanks to its NivaFlex mainspring and offers shock resistance via the Inca block system. The Celita SW200 uses a ball bearing rotor style and I wouldn't normally mention this as you'll find the same concept in many movements including ETA. I am however mentioning it on this occasion because we are talking about Eterna and it is no coincidence that their logo is represented by 5 spheres arranged exactly as the 5 ball bearings spinning the rotor. Unfortunately, Eterna doesn't seem to get much popularity in today's watch world, but I think it's safe to say that true enthusiasts recognize the brand and its significant contribution to the industry. Eterna was founded in 1856 in Grenchen, Switzerland and they were real pioneers in watchmaking. The year 1948 is relevant in relation to the five spheres positioned at equal distances from each other. This is when Eterna produced the Eternamatic, a name we can see engraved on the rotor of the Eternity model. This was a movement that had its oscillating weight mounted on ball bearings to reduce friction and the effect of shocks. The Eternamatic entered watchmaking history as the ball bearing mounted rotor became a standard for automatic movements. Eterna also had some important collaborations in its history and was associated with sport cars manufacturers such as Porsche through their Porsche design subsidiary and with French actress Brigitte Bardot who won in the 1950s the Golden Heart. This watch is described by Eterna as the crowning glory in the latest watch segment. It was the world's smallest automatic movement with a massive gold rotor. In the same decade, Eterna released the Extra Thin Centenaire and also developed the Contiki 20, a tribute to the expedition of the Norwegian explorer Thor Heyerdahl in 1947, who, together with his crew, worn Eterna watches during the expedition. Eterna was owned by Porsche Design between the mid-1990s and 2014. A key achievement during this time is the 6036 mechanical movement designed and built by Eterna for the P6910 indicator, a watch that seems to be currently worth over £90,000. Comprising around 800 components, it displays elapsed time digitally and features four barrels, making it one of the most complex designs of its generation. Beside Eterna, IWC are also known for their partnership with Porsche. I kept what I believe is the best part for the end, the 1930s. Two things happened then. Firstly, Eterna created a small serially produced baguette movement for women's wristwatches. And secondly, most notably, the company split into two joint stock companies in 1932. Eterna AG manufactured precision watches and ETA AG became a maker of movements. Yes, this would be the same ETA currently owned by the Swatch Group. It is known that since 2002, ETA has been making efforts to stop supplying movements to watchmakers outside of the Swatch Group, but the Swiss Competition Commission ran an investigation and concluded the Swatch Group should gradually reduce the supply rather than abruptly cutting it. Many watchmakers accused that this would have put them out of business. This may be the explanation of why we see a Celita movement in this Eternity model, and also in other Eterna watches. I find this aspect particularly unique and almost sad. The founding company of ETA having to rely on other movements for their watches, although to be honest there is an important historical link between ETA and Celita as well. Since the 1950s, Celita was a major outsourced assembly company for ETA movements. 
This was the case until 2003 when Celita started developing their own movements based on ETA calibers. They were able to do so because the ETA patent protection rights had expired. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please do like and subscribe. Until next time.